so there are two you one is the you which has a name and a face and the other is a you behind this name and face when you oh, wake up in the morning and you see yourself as a has a face and a body then you have relations and you have all the stories associated with the relation this is my mother this is my father this is my friend this is my enemy all those are just stories of the mind and it's beautiful to have in story and stories can change when you go beyond what you think your name is and what you think your face is then there is another you which says this is my this is the name of my body this is my body this is my name so this whichever says this is my name this is my body means this name and body are not you the one that says this is my thought is not the thought even consciousness so when this is my consciousness so it's not you that which is saying that all this is yours we are focusing on that let go of the technique just follow and the mantra has the power to free you from the lower the fake you the name and the face person will die for sure whether today today or tomorrow or day after that is a 100 percent guarantee so in the universe when we open our eyes we see so many things and everything has a story to it but when we close our eyes then we see with closed eyes when the biological eyes are closed then the darkness that we see inside also has a light and this light is in your heart and part of this light is in your middle of your skull because in the middle of your skull in the middle of the skull we process the infinity of the universe so when you we when we get news from the hubble telescope etc we find that the universe is infinite and so must be the creation infinity on infinity but in the infinities that we see in the universe there is a huge darkness just like us it's not a darkness it's a sort of emptiness so when we when we feel the mantra we can float inside ourselves and see oh there is a lot of free fall there is a lot of as if we are between atoms there is a lot of emptiness but when we see it with when we see the world externally there are so many things but each thing at its very basic level is a play of the same molecules and atoms different combinations of molecules and atoms leading to different combination of things that's all the same water if you give it heat make it more energetic becomes vapor but it's still water when it becomes cold it becomes falls down becomes ice still water melts down becomes a river still water the forms are different but it is all one so what is this emptiness that is in you when you close your eyes and when an astronaut goes to the moon leaving aside the planet on this planet on this planet we live in a world where we live in houses which have got straight walls and these straight walls and the geometry of this planet is such that it is built on the assumption that two parallel lines can never meet so you can have parallel lines and then you can have geometry your regular geometry and you can build houses and you can build trains and all that 
and good. But when you want to leave the planet on a rocket, you need you need something more than simple geometry. You need calculus without which you cannot calculate the velocity with which to leave the earth. And calculus says that the two lines which are parallel do meet. They parallel nili ni spricha sapa calculus is to be atarvat sajimle. No tochka this condition. Two parallel lines meet at the point of infinity. And you have to use calculus to leave the earth. Similarly, when we are on the planet, we see so many different things, but everything you know is a play of energy of atoms and, and uh, molecules at the end of the day. Molecules are just atoms assembled in a different way, in different coefficients and with different correlations, that's all. 12 would be C12, carbon would be, and, and, and so on. But so many different things at a various level are just one. And when we close our eyes, we find a universe exactly like the one that is formed by rockets leaving the Earth. The same sort of emptiness. But this emptiness is full of something else, something in which the infinities of the universe is nothing. I'm going to be telling today a story, a true story. Usually I've got always, I have Shiv on my background. So if you'll notice, I have got today, not Shiv, but someone else. So usually my background is what I'm going to be showing it to you right now. It's always Shiv most of the time. So most of the time it is Om Namo Shiva, Om Namo Shiva, Om Namo Shiva, Om Namo Shiva, so that everyone starts to understand Om Namo Shiva, I mean, Om Namo Shiva, 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 Irina, Om Namo Shiva, Irina, Om Namo Shiva, Om Namo Shiva, Om Namo Shivaya Kata, Om Namo Shivaya Luva, Om Namo Shivaya Marina, Om Namo Shivaya Kata, Om Namo Shivaya Paras, Om Namo Shivaya Preeti, Om Namo Shivaya Rita, Om Namo Shivaya Tami, Om Namo Shivaya Kata, Om Namo Shivaya. So in your internal universe, you feel the magic of the Om Namo Shivaya, which means I see the infinity of love inside me, I see the infinity of love around me. And today's story is, we have to go back to India in 1975. So around, yeah, around 70 years ago, 68 years ago. In that year, there lived a very poor guy. Like in India, there are four, uh, four social startups. And the lowest strata is, top one is, was the intelligence, then was the rulers and the politicians, they are from the same class, then the army ones, and then they were traders, and the, and the last one was the untouchables. The very, very proletariat, the real working class. The others are just management class. So, this, this, and this was the majority and very, very poor. If you are poor in this, then means you are, you are so poor that you cannot really afford anything, barely just a food. So in the south of India, in Odisha, in one of the states, there was a, there was a boy named Mahanidhi. And Mahanidhi was told by her mother, don't worry, we are all alone and we are all poor. Like my family is only you and me. She was a single mother. and But you, the pundit, when you were born, the priest said three things. That you will marry someone from outside. One. Two, she will have a whole forest in her name. She will be the owner of a forest. We are living and surviving in a 
near a forest and you are going to be, your wife is going to be someone who is going to be owning a forest. And the third is that she will be born in the English calendar, it would be they worked it out, Taurus. And her mother would, at times when he would be feeling desperate, she would tell him that, don't worry, this is just, this will just get married, find your, find your wife and uh, who will have these three characters. And they were very poor. Now to look for money, Mahani Devi leaves, Mahani Devi leaves his family, goes to work in Delhi at that time. I was in Delhi also at that time, but I didn't know him, of course. And he becomes, uh, he, he starts to draw. He doesn't know anything. He starts to draw people. And he becomes famous in a show, in a small time, in a way that he, he would draw a person very accurately within 10 minutes. That was his challenge, that I would portray, I would give a good portrait within 10 minutes. So people are used to spending hours and days on portraits. He would draw a very fast one with charcoal and a very primitive brush, but it was enough for him to make a living. So he started to survive in, in Delhi and, be, and he somewhat became famous, but you have to pay in Delhi for so many things. He wasn't really becoming rich. One fine day, a lady came specially when they were, this was a time when there were lots of hippies. This was a time when there were lots of hippies coming to India via a very specific route. The route was called the hippie route. <laughs> and it was, you can come from uh, Europe via Bulgaria, then Turkey, then crossing over Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan by road, and then reaching India. It was a doable road. It, uh, route, it wasn't... There was no such uh, civil wars and the state of the world was not such as it is now. So, she came by this hippie route, enjoying life. It was supposed to be the adventure of a lifetime. So it was supposed to be the adventure of a lifetime. And this is who was disturbing me, my daughter's cat. So, so she, she came by this route as a hippie and, and she heard that in Delhi there is a person who draws portraits for in 10 minutes. So she went and visited him as one of the tourist things to do. Mahanidhi saw her, didn't say anything, but he drew a portrait of her and she wasn't happy with it. She said, you have to come back one more day. Next time she came, he still, he again drew. She said, this isn't, uh, it seems you are, you are famous, but in all honesty, I can't. He says, I'm slightly nervous. I want to ask you three things. And she says, what three things? And he says like, and he's the poorest of all Indians. He's from the caste of untouchables. It's a very heavy curse. Most of the people who complain in North America cannot even imagine, cannot even imagine the life of an untouchable in 60s, 70s, and in some parts of India, even now. The humiliation, pain, etc. One lady I met in Vancouver, she said, uh, I'm very traumatized. I said, why is it that? And I've been very traumatized and I've been abused by my, by my father. And uh, I was really like, you know, because I also have two daughters. My father, he did such a terrible thing. When he was, I was 16, he shouted at me. And since that day, I've been taking drugs, etc., everything to calm down. And I still cannot forgive him. I will never, he shouted at me. And uh, yeah, I was 16 and he caught me smoking and he shouted and now all my life I've been cursing my father. So in North America, people cannot even imagine the pain, the hunger that a person, untouchable person in 70s would have gone through. But he's making a no ending, he's just surviving. And he asked her three things. What is your, what is your sign? Is it Taurus? 
Do you by any chance own a forest? And of course, she was from Sweden, it seems. So she was from far off country. And she got very curious and she asked him, why is it that you're asking me the question? He said, look, I've, it has been foretold that I'm going to be marrying and I have fallen in love with you. And he says, she says, like, you know, I also am feeling some sort of a connection. And uh, he says that you, we should, I should show you Odisha. And she goes and he follows. They go together to his village. She sees everything and accepts the poverty that is there in India. And eventually, they even get married in India. They, they register marriage. And he says, she says, now, let's go to Sweden. Now, the poorest of poor, this guy, he says, I'm your husband. I cannot take any money from you. So I definitely will come, but I will come by my own, like I'll buy my own plane ticket. And the plane ticket at that time was, I would put it like 10 years of what he was making. The plane ticket for Delhi to Sweden at that time would have been easily 10 years of his, not saving, just what he would be earning. But he was very, very proud. So Mahanidhi says, go. And eventually she did, but they kept constantly in touch by sending uh, to each other letters. However, he tried all, he, he sold off his land, he sold off everything. He tried, he couldn't even get the visa money, etc. Some money was there, but it just wasn't enough to get us buy a ticket to Sweden in 1978. So after a year of struggling, finally Mahanedi says, you know what, he went to pray. And on the way to the temple, he saw someone biking out there to the temple and he had an idea. So he came home, took his bike, organized his journey to Sweden in 1978 by bike. And he just followed, he went across all the borders. He went from India to Afghanistan, and it's all mountainous. From Afghanistan, he crossed over, reached uh, all the Iran, Iraq, crossed over to Turkey. After Turkey, you are in Europe. He went through Bulgaria, which was like semi-communistic at that time. But every border he would go, he would be on land. It wasn't so strict as it is now. It wasn't so strict for a cycle person. <laughs> Man, it is now. He, he did not take a plane. So he reached and everybody he told the truth. Look, this is my wife. She's from Sweden. These are our letters. This is this. This is my Indian uh, the passport. He had that. And I'm going to Sweden via bike. And every place, by the grace of God, they allowed it. And they started to write articles about it. So when he reached Sweden, one of the most conservative places on planet. He reached the border and he said that, look, I have come over out here. And the guards wouldn't believe him. So they cross very verified. They, they called his wife. They said, yes, it is like that. He is my husband. So the border people put together money. And in the, the final stage, he was given, he, was, he rode it to the place of his wife, some small city but with a jungle. Her family is, was rich, and he came by train and she met him. And this was in 1978. There was a lot of news about him, but slowly people forget. Slowly people forget. So, Now he's being interviewed again. There has been a like, this is an amazing story that someone crossed over on a bike, eight countries, five and a half 
five and a half months it took him. This is his uh, photograph of them when they were there. And now their marriage, and you can find it on the Google, their latest photo. They still are alive, they have two children, and they have, uh, their marriage has been for more than 45 years now. And now they're, they're thinking of making a Hollywood movie with Dave uh, Patel with him and uh, uh, portraying him. So they interviewed him. How did you manage to cross over eight countries? How did you go eight countries, five and a half months? And in the interview, you have to see them together. In the interview, he just says, I love them. Hey, you look good. Sure. So when we see inside us with closed eyes, you see an emptiness. The only thing, the only thing, the only thing on the planet, just as atoms in different combinations form different things, the only thing on this planet is love, love, love. And you have to love God so intensely. Just like he saw godliness, divine divine prophecy, they both felt it. You are also ordained. No one will escape the clutches of love. Whether we call it death, whether we call it communion, whether we call it enlightenment, whether we have to cross eight countries in five and a half months on a bike. That also, those bikes, they were in super bikes, like carbon bikes of today. These are the cheapest of all bikes. So you need to be knowing that the basic component of the universe is only love. And in the name of love, you live. In the name of love, you die. In the name of love of God, you achieve everything because you also have been prophesied that you will meet your loved one. Om Namo Shivai. Om Namo Shivai. Om Namo Shivai. May your heart at this moment become pure love. May you see God in everything and everyone and may you love as these two Om Namo Shivai. Om Namo Shivai. Om Priyambakam Yajamahi. Feel the power of the mantra taking you beyond body, mind, intellect, beyond time when you were one with God. Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarupnahan Mrityur Mokshi Amrata Om Purnamadhi Purnamadhi Purnas Purnamadhi Chita Purnasya Purnameva Purnameva Vashishita From the perfection of the universe Nothing can be taken away, nothing can be added, because the infinity of perfection is such that it always remains perfect. And you have to understand that this mantra is talking about your life with love. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Keep on praying with Om Namo Shiva, serving everyone and everything, and seeing God in everything and everyone with the power of pure love in your heart. Om Namo Shri.